on in everyone come on in because we are back for another season of ready to love and what season is this shoot we on season nine we are on season nine and we are back in texas the big state of texas but we over here now in um fort worth home of the dallas cowboys or close to it arlington fort worth ain't that near each other my cowboys y'all know i'm a cowboy for cowboy fan nfc champions this year yes we are yes we are don't know cowboy haters be dropping down in my comments let me be happy for once you know us cowboys fans out here got rough seasons but we're here to discuss whether or not these people are ready to love are they ready to love i don't know i don't know if they're ready to love but we sure gonna find out this season the episode was called hot and unbothered i don't know were they hot and unbothered or cold and uh, unbothered i don't know I didn't see no real, real sparks flying. It seems like based on the previews, maybe some of the sparks are going to come from the next group of people. How did y'all like how they split it up, the 10 and the 10? You know what? Um, I didn't have no problem with it because I think it gave us a lot more time to uh, meet the people this time. You know what? I was hoping they weren't going to eliminate anybody on the first day. But what I do like is that because there were less people, I think everyone did get a chance to get around and meet everyone. So maybe the elimination on the first day made a little bit more sense. Before, I always felt like it wasn't enough time to talk to everyone. So if you got eliminated on the first date, I always felt like you got you kind of got shortchanged. But, you know, at this time, because it wasn't that many people, uh, maybe it did give them enough time to eliminate and be comfortable with it. Because who they eliminated, I was like, I'm good with that. <laughs> I was good with who with who they eliminated. I really was good with it. But let's start talking about everybody who came through the door. The first one on the scene was Miss April. She had her little fur on in the middle of the day. Is that a thing, y'all? Do people wear fur in the middle of the day in Texas? I thought furry dresses was meant for the nighttime. But you know, I'm old. I'm old school. Um, but anyway, Miss April came on in. She was a pharmaceutical director. She liked to joke around talking about she sells drugs. That was funny. She said she wants somebody tall, dark, and handsome. Girl, come up with something more interesting. You waited all this time to come on Ready to Love and you got tall, dark, and handsome. That could mean anything. Mia came on, 36 esthetician. Um, you could tell her, her skin is gorgeous. Her skin is gorgeous. Um, she might need to be dropping some skincare routines for people including me because her skin looked great she said she got two kids april ain't got no kids uh but i think that she wants some babies does she want babies i'm not for sure if she wanted babies maybe one uh but mika said she done with them she done she don't want no more kids so i really wasn't getting why mika was going after the old dude who comes up later dominique because he said he wanted 10 kids but she don't want no kids i mean come on people don't be wasting your time making connections with men who you know you don't line up with this man just said his daddy has 20 something had 20 something kids he wants to have at least two to ten kids and you don't even want to have no more kids why waste your time i mean this is out in the real world too if you a woman who doesn't want any more kids i don't know why women waste their time dating men who want kids it's a waste of time. Mamika says she's tired of going out and being the only woman and not married. She says she's ready to get married. Um, I don't know if Mika was ever married then. Is this, was she divorced? We didn't hear it, but the way she's talking, it sounds like she never married uh, the baby daddy or baby daddies of her children. I don't know which one it is. Um, it doesn't sound like she's divorced, so it sounds like she's going to be a first-time married person. That's what she's kind of going for. But she was over here asking fashion questions for the fashion king that came in. They called him the Nutcracker. That outfit was horrible, though. It really, re really was horrible. Demonte was 42, coming in, talking about he turns heads for the wrong reason. <laughs> I don't know. He said he's a stylist. He told Mickey she could put on put on like a nice little gold chain with the dress i do think that i think she could have had a nice little piece of jewelry to go right there but i don't know they say on the airplane put your own mask before you put the mask on of someone else and i don't know i think diamante not diamante what's his name diamante 
I think he should have spent a little bit more time rethinking that outfit he had on. Um, because, nah, it wasn't given. I don't know. Was this, <laughs> was this film during Christmas? Maybe it was a Christmas holiday outfit. I don't know. But when she called him, when Mika called him, the nutcracker, I fell out. Later on in the episode, DeMonte was talking about, you know, yeah, we out here doing this adulting thing. I was like, who the hell is he talking about? You've been an adult for over darn near 20, 30 years. Adulting? You're not adulting. You darn near about to see your adulting. You're about to get a discount at Denny's. 10% off. What are you talking about? You just now an adult and at 42 years old. Tell me I got this apartment and now I'm not paying. You know, I'm adulting out here paying off debt and stuff. Ooh, what a turn off. What a turn off. This man is talking about adulting at 42 years old. You senior adulting. I don't even know what you're talking about. You darn near a senior citizen. 10% off at Denny's. April was like, I would think at this age, we got a few things in order. Me too, April. I would think at this age, we wouldn't be bragging about having no apartment. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And then when he finally got eliminated in the end, he was talking about, man, I'm bringing this, all this to the table and I still got eliminated. <laughs> Where do people get this from? Where do people get this from? Where did he think coming in an outfit that looked like the Nutcracker, talking about he's just now starting to adult with an apartment, and now he's playing off bills and got debts, that that was going to be something very, um, somebody would find impressive. Even when he was talking about his fashion shows, talking about, yeah, I'm, you know, I, I'm not, I don't like to brag or anything, but I do dress a lot of celebrity clients. And I've done a lot of fashion shows. I've done about seven fashion shows. And the woman that was talking to me at the time, Alexis was like, oh, that's so impressive. Girl, that ain't impressive. Seven fashion shows, he's 41 years old. Now, maybe if you did seven fashion shows in one year, that would be impressive. But to do seven fashion shows over, over I don't know, a course of 20, 25 years of a career. I, what is he talking about? He should have gone home. The right person went home. I know I was talking about we shouldn't get people eliminated on the first date, but he would have got eliminated too if I was out there in the single world. He got he would have got eliminated on the first drink. Forget about the first episode. After the first drink, yeah, you can go. Then we have Will show up. Will's 31. He's a um, real estate developer. He's Mr. Confident on the show. Maybe a little bit too overconfident, but I, I'm, I'm already peeping Will. I'm peeping Will. I know he's he's talking with all this bravado. I know he's talking with all this, um, like he's big man on campus, you know. But I already know that that's a big front. It's a big front. Deep down inside, I actually think Will is a completely different person. I don't know why he's putting on this act. I don't know why he's putting on this act. Maybe because women in the past have thought he was soft. And so now what he does is he um, overcompensates. And he tries to um, act real tough like he runs women. But Will don't run no women. I could already tell that. I could tell by a couple of things that Will said that he don't really run women. And that on the inside of Will, I actually think he's a nicer person. But I'm going to see. I'm going to keep it going. Because when he started talking about don't hate the player, hate the game, I said, oh, goodness. That's from my era. That's from my era. You can't be no young man out here running the street using phrases like that from my era talking about don't play a hate the player hate the game nah something ain't lining up with will he ain't no real player he's a player trying to borrow lines act like he is but his real history i don't think is what he's telling us i don't believe it one bit i'm gonna let things unfold i'm gonna let things unfold with will see how it works out but i'm not believing it with that crochet top he had on that old outfit he was giving me was not giving me player outfit. The things, besides all the bravado he was using, everything else uh, didn't give me a player vibe. The things he was talking about, if you listen to him a couple of times, he had a couple little moments in there where he was finishing Bible verses. Not saying, you know, I know everybody from, from Texas can finish a Bible verse, but there was a lot of little other things about Will that told me that he, mo he might be more hyped than what he's trying to pretend like. I'm not believing it. I'm not believing the character he's showing us right now. But we'll see. We're going to let it unfold. I ain't got much on him. Um, you know, he's running around here talking about I'm the total package. I'm the total package. Um, 
Okay, well, we just gonna go. We just gonna listen to you for now. But I'm not believing it in the end. I want to know who the real Will is because who he showed us in this episode. I'm telling y'all right now, it ain't the real him. It is not the real him. But he seemed to take a liking to Alexis. Alexis came on here and she said she want to have kids. And everything, and then uh, Alexis start. You know, they seem to have a nice little bond. Alexis, and you know, let us know that she's got an autoimmune disease. Um, I don't know why she told us that on the first date, girl. You got people going on dates with herpes, syphilis, gonorrhea, um, all other kind of incurable diseases, contagious diseases, and they not let that information out on the first date, the first meeting, the first encounter. Um, you don't need to be telling nobody about that on your first time meeting them. I save that for people who go make, who might mean something to you. Everybody don't need to know your HIPAA status. Everybody don't need to know your HIPAA status when you first meet them. Keep that to yourself until later on if you decide you want to have anything more interesting with them. And then maybe you can decide if you want to share that or not. But people running around here with things that are contagious and even telling people, shoot, people out here hiding they got COVID. <laughs> they ain't even letting you know they, they got diagnosed with COVID. They be all up in your face. And you think you need to uh, admit and you think you need to reveal all of a sudden that you got uh, HS. I can't even pronounce it. The minute you meet a person, girl, don't do that. Don't do that. Especially with Will. Will ain't, Will ain't sharing nothing real personal about himself. Not yet. He ain't made himself vulnerable to you. I can see if maybe he shares some vulnerable story with you and you decided, hey, let me share a vulnerable story with story with you as well. Uh, but you don't need to be sharing no vulnerable stories like that to just a random old man as you meet them for the first time, for the first two hours. That's unnecessary. Then you have William, the 37-year-old comedian slash, I don't know what else, chef he said. Slash, I don't know what else he want to open up a, a gun store entrepreneur. I know everybody was having flashbacks to uh, a a Aries old uh, man, Phil. Flashback. I know if Aries is watching this season, she, she just got triggered again. I know she got triggered because I got triggered. I was like, oh, not again. Not another uh, man who can't find himself that's unstable, that's 37 and he got man hips. He got a dad. He got that dad body going on. Them dad clothes going on. He was doing a lot. You know, he's lucky he didn't go home. I think the only reason he didn't go home is probably because Tommy saved him. Tommy, Tommy has a soft spot for comedians, and maybe Tommy said, "Hey, you know, between Will and Diamante, we're gonna go ahead and send the fashion stylist home so he can work on his fashions, but we're gonna let the comedian stay an additional week." Uh, but they didn't like him. They didn't like him one bit. They was talking about him real bad in that deliberation room. And in fact, you know, who was talking about the most was Mika. I'm going to tell you nothing I picked up on Mika. Mika don't know how to read a room. Mika does not know how to read a room. I picked up on that. She said a couple of things about William, especially when she was kind of like talking about how, you know, he's all over the place. I do understand how he was all over the place, but the way that she was talking about him as a comedian... You could tell Tommy didn't like it. I mean, when they start talking about William and about, you know, he's a clown. He's a class clown. He, you know, he ain't got no seriousness to him. Blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. Uh, Tommy was offended. Tommy don't like you talking about his fellow comedians, even if it is true. And Mika was just going and going and she wasn't reading the facial expression of Tommy at all. She didn't realize that it, while she was uh, talking about William, she was low key shading Tommy as well. Probably flashback when Tommy was younger. Because, you know, comedians got it hard out here. Com comedians really, sometimes it's hard for them to get the woman they want until after they made their money in comedy. <laughs> they knew how hard it was dating when they was, you know, broke and beginning, co uh, beginning comedian. So when women give them a hard time, these comedians, I think they feel some kind of way about it. But you know what? She Mika they couldn't read the room she, the way she was talking about him. And then the other part about Mika that I really didn't get was when she started talking about, yeah, he's uh, he been married twice with three kids. And then I said to myself, has Mika been married? Has Mika been married? I sure hope Mika is not a woman that has two kids um, by different men, never married, but then talked about William, 
who's had two marriages and three kids and looks like he married the mother of his kids. I sure hope not. I sure hope this isn't a situation where a woman believes that she, having two kids, never married either of the fathers or the father or whatever, is worse than a man who at least tried to enter into a marriage and uh, have married the woman who had the kids. I hope we're not there. I hope we're not at the point where now divorce people are looked upon even worse than people who decide to never even try to make a go with it in marriage with the people they have kids with. I don't, I don't, I don't think we should be seeing, saying who's better or who's worse because I'm not going to say who's better or who's worse. But I'm looking at Mika and I'm saying, does Mika know how to read a room? I sure hope we don't hear no wild story about Mika. She already told us that wild story where she was a groupie and she got flued in and then she had to sit in the car while the man got his um, manicure and pedicure. Girl, girl, I hope that was a long, 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 long time ago. But I don't know. I don't know if she got the best decision making. Like I said, she's over here going after Dominique. And he has clearly said he wants a lot of kids. And uh, she, she, she pretty much said she don't want no more kids. One at the most. But she's still chasing him. He's still her, he's still her pick. That right there is a problem which tells me her decision making may not be the best. But Dominique, he did say that, you know what, his daddy had 25 kids. Shoot. Good Lord. 25 kids. For real, for real. 25 kids how many women what kind of family history is this oh no he didn't say his daddy had 25 kids he said his grandfather had a 25 kids but he said he's been ready to be a husband um for three years now he pays attention i believe him i believe him because between him and laron when they were playing that game they was paying attention the, everybody like an attentive man everyone likes an attentive man how did y'all like that game you know what, I actually enjoyed the game because I think the game allowed you to see which man was really asking good questions or really getting to know the women so that they could maybe possibly win the game. Um, so it, it kind of shows you which men know how to listen and which men don't. And then I, got, I thought it was a good little icebreaker for everybody to learn about each other because even if you didn't know the answer, I think you were able to learn something about each of the individual people through just the game. I thought that was a nice little addition, a nice little icebreaker, because sometimes people do need a little help learning about that many people in that short of time. And I appreciate that this, this mixer, this first thing that they had, wasn't all about drinking, getting drunk. And remember that one season when they had Miami, they had to show up in bikinis already on the first episode. I didn't like that either. So I like the fact that they had this little mixer to help everybody out to learn about everybody else. And it was interesting to see how uh, Dominique and Laron were the two ones fighting for the safe spot, the one that wouldn't get knocked off. And in the end, uh, Dominique won. He seemed to be the front runner for a lot of these women so far. We'll see if he can live up to his height. I knew something was wrong when they weren't introducing that girl, Kashia. And I was like, why haven't they introduced that girl, Kashia, the one over there in the purple dress? They took a long time to introduce her. And finally, when they did introduce her, I was like, oh, yeah, I know why. <laughs> she's going to be a problem. I could tell already. She's going to be a problem already. I pretty much didn't like none of her conversation the whole episode. None of it. None of it. None of it. None of it. The minute she started opening up her mouth, I was like, ah, she's going to be a problem. I could tell. She think a whole lot about herself. Um, I could already tell that. Uh, she was making up stuff along the way. First of all, because she said she's 35. She said that um, she was raised to be a wife uh, and a mother. And her career came second. Um, then she went on and said she got divorced in 2018. Because she learned that the man uh, that she married had fathered four kids. Uh, and she didn't even know it. He had four kids. I'm kind of like Will. Will might have asked the question in a mean kind of way. He might have, but it was a question everybody else had. How the hell did you marry somebody and not know he had four kids? You didn't do no background checks. 
This is 2023. Even 2018, when you married him, that was you in the era of background checks. Before anybody gets married out here nowadays, y'all need to be doing background checks, credit checks, and financial forensics. Because let me tell you, can't nobody have no kids and there not be no trail of money. You need to be looking at some bank statements or something. How are you not going to know about four kids? You mean to tell me his whole family kept four kids quiet for him? Nah, she didn't do something that she should have done as well. There ain't no way you can marry a man and he have four kids and you just got totally bamboozled. Nope, you turned a blind eye to a lot of things and tell me, why did you turn a blind eye? Now, Will might have been talking about, oh, was it the dingling that good? No, nah, more than likely it wasn't the dingling. More than likely it was the money. More than likely he was promising her some things that she didn't want to say no to. But in the end, she the one that got taken. There's a lot of men out here who will promise you the world, make a, make, puff up your ears with all that candy because they know what you're looking for, tell you everything you want to hear, you think you getting the good deal. You think you done hit the jackpot because you so greedy in your head thinking you about to hit the jackpot with this man. You decide you don't want to do no background check on him at all. Come to find out he was the one taking you. He was the one trying to snag you because he realized he was not the catch. You were probably more of the catch and he's bamboozling you. But you kept thinking you was getting over by marrying him. Nah, she didn't ask some questions. And now she's sitting on this show acting like she's so intelligent. She's the one asking all the deep questions. When she pulled that little stunt with LaRon, and she was sitting on that little, uh, by the pool, leaning in, talking about, do you know why I'm leaning in on you? Because you, know, you know why I'm trying to avoid your personal, you know why I'm trying to invade your personal space? Because I want to get you out your comfort zone. Girl, what are you talking about? This is starting to manipulative. She said, no, because I could tell you guard it. And you know what? I want you to take your guard down. What are you, an instructor? What are you talking about? How are you going to do something in, darn near basic in a way, sort of manipulate the man to give you what you want and then tell them how I just manipulated you? <laughs> Girl, what's wrong with you? Your ego is big. Your ego is big. It's like flirting with a dude talking about, see how I just flirted with you right there and got you to give me everything you want. I wanted you to give me. See how I snatched that from you? See how I control you? That's why she probably liked LaRon because she thinks she's going to be able to control LaRon because she sat over here on the pool and tried to manipulate him. And he just sat up there and was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But once again, more than likely, she's going to be in a run, a run for money for LaRon because I think LaRon is a player. He the one talking about he, he, he out Wednesday through Sunday. Wednesday through Sunday, he's out in the club. He said he gonna need a woman who gives him a reason to stay home. Uh, Laron, Laron is immature. He talking about he want to get married, but I, he want to get married. But the way he was talking did not sound like no person ready to get married. Not to me. He talking about the reason he moved to Texas was because of COVID and no state taxes. So he one of the people that when we was on lockdown in another state. He was like, to hell with this. I got to go to Texas where there ain't no lockdown because I got to be up in that club no matter what. <laughs> he was one of them people like, I can't be locked up. I can't be locked up. I got to move to Texas because all these other states are on lockdown. I got to be free. I got to be able to go out to the clubs Wednesday through Sunday. COVID can't stop me. He talking about he like Kushia. Talking about Kushia look like she might bake me a pie. She real Southern. Uh, Kushia going to break you, uh, bake you some humble pie. Koshia gonna break you some humble pie. I don't people look Koshia. Koshia like control. She like control. Then she was leaning him talking about, ooh, I like that strong voice. Is that intentional? Who got an intentional strong voice? What, like I'm doing it on purpose? Like you do stuff on purpose to get certain reactions? Not nah, everybody ain't like you, Koshia. Maybe that's just his voice. Maybe it ain't an act. Even when they were in the liberation room and she was telling Tommy the reason why. She liked Laurent was because Laurent let me invade his personal space. Girl, she act like she got a badge of honor. She about to put the flag up. Ooh, he let me invade his personal space. And he let me throw him off center. So that's why I like him. You like him because you was able to throw him off center and invade his personal space? 
Nah, I already see who Koshia is. They got the one guy, Glenn, he didn't even show up. I don't even think Glenn was in that car they were showing up. I think that was all for an act. I think Glenn never showed up, period. He told them way ahead of time, I ain't coming. He said, I'm not coming. I didn't look at the past season and realize um, this ain't for me. In the end, you know, it's Demonte that went home. Like I said, he should have gone home. He over there talking about he got 35 tattoos. They all got significance to him, but he couldn't remember about the one on his hand. He a whole fool. Bye, Demonte. Go buy some fabric. Go some guy some fabric and sit down at the sewing machine. You don't belong here. You do not belong here. I was cool with Demonte going on, going home. In the end, to be honest with you, so could William. William could have gone home because he's he feel 2.0. Feel 2.0. Unstable. Unstable. We was triggered. Anyway, that's it, y'all. Uh, we'll see you next week for um, the next episode of the new crop of people. Talk to you later. Bye.